Deion Sanders was called out by another college football coach. And I'll tell you why on today's episode of Locked on Buffs. You are Locked on Buffs, your daily podcast on the Colorado Buffaloes. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked on Bus. I'm your host, Kevin Borba. Thank you guys for making Locked on Bus your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast. Today, we got an action-packed episode. Jim Mora calls out Deion Sanders for his methods, um, for his antics, if you will. Not really antics. I'm just being dramatic here. Um, then we're going to talk about Colorado's huge transfer portal additions yesterday, um, Wednesday, if you're watching this on Thursday. And then lastly, Cordell Stewart, Colorado legend predicted a Colorado championship and I'll tell you when, and we'll break down what he says um, about Colorado moving forward. Uh, but let's dive right into what Jim Moore had to say about coach prime and the transfer portal shenanigans that have been going on. And again, when I use the word shenanigans, I'm just, it's just for fun. I just, it's not often you get to use the word shenanigans. Anyway, Jim Mora, who is the former UCLA coach, uh, current uh, UConn coach tweeted any coach that won't allow a transfer to access film is operating from a place of complete paranoia. You really believe an opponent can gather info from random clips. And then he tagged Ryan Clark because Ryan Clark was asking if this was a normal thing. The, the guy from ESPN and he played for the Steelers. If you're not familiar with his ESPN work, he said part of the job of a college coach college in all caps is to advocate for your student athletes, current and past. Okay. Let's, let's dive into a couple things here. First of all, I would like to throw out the disclaimer that Colorado did, in fact, um, release a statement later, late yesterday, um, that they're going to allow all of the players to access their film. Um, so that won't be an issue. Um, I honestly think that they probably just didn't want to hear about it anymore. So they're like, just give it to them. Who cares? Um, secondly, uh, to address Jim Moore's comments, college coach in all caps, I think there's kind of a an underlying rumor or not rumor, but belief that coach prime is either treating this like it's an NFL job uh, because that is what he knows, or he will be pursuing an NFL job eventually. And so I feel like there's a lot of people kind of addressing the way that he's managing the situation. I have, I have three thoughts on this whole thing right here. One flipping the roster like this is a complete anomaly. Um, they're going to be replacing, uh, I don't even know, like 60 something players. They're going to have like 70, probably 70 plus players by the time, by the time things are all said and done that are new, that's not going to happen again. He's not going to be flipping the roster every year. Is he going to be in the transfer portal every year? Probably. Who wouldn't be? USC had a really good season last year and they still hit the transfer portal really hard. They have the number two class in the portal. So this is an anomaly. Obviously this is the most dramatic version of a roster rebuild we've ever seen, but when you're coach prime and you have the appeal that you do, why not? Um, was he supposed to keep the one in 11 roster kids and just try to make it work? Like, obviously it's no, no hate to those guys, but if he could get upgrades, why wouldn't he Two, I think with the college coach thing, which I kind of already touched on, people don't like the way that coach prime is operating. Um, it's to each their own, I guess, uh, Mel Tucker did the same thing. Uh, Lincoln Riley did the same thing last year and it was kind of, I don't want to say kind of praised, but it was definitely not as um, villainized, or I guess if that's a word, I'm going to say it's a word, villainized as Coach Prime. Um, I think Colorado has kind of emerged as a little villain of college football now because of all this. And then three, my final thoughts on this whole thing is I was told by multiple players. I asked around because I obviously I didn't play college football. Um but I was like, what is the process? I have multiple friends, one that played at Stanford, one that played at Colorado, uh, and then a couple others. And they all said, it is your own responsibility. And one of my friends even transferred. So um, it is your own responsibility to get your film um, in most cases. Obviously, there's some programs that will let you have access to that film. But in the most cases, you're kind of supposed to gra gather your film, then go. Um, so that way, obviously, you could put stuff together and show it to um, the other programs. So I'm not shocked that Colorado kind of was like, no. Um, the only thing that it didn't make, the only reason I could say it didn't make sense was because it was from last fall. And so it was a different coach, um, different system. 
Uh, it was Carl Durrell, uh, so it doesn't really matter. It was just this player in particular didn't have a lot of tape um, because he didn't play on the field during games, um, so he needed to use his practice tape to kind of help sell his case. And so either way, C- Jim Mora, um, I don't know why he came at Coach Prime this hard. Um, I do think there's kind of like a, I don't want to say an animosity between college coaches and Coach Prime, but there are some people that are definitely um, not a fan of what this new era of Colorado football is. Um, and then this is what uh, J.D. Paquel from On3, a good friend of mine, said. Here's my guess on what's happening right now at Colorado. From the outside looking in, I believe everybody involved here is making a business decision. Business decision. I think Sanders is making a decision that's best for his football team and saying we were 1-11 last year. The personal that made that happen is quite frankly not good enough for my standards, for our standards, for what we want get, for what we want to get done. So I believe a lot of these guys are not at all are not all are being told they no longer have a spot at Colorado, put it bluntly. I believe a lot of these guys are being cut. It's just a business uh, here for Coach Prime. Honestly, I couldn't agree. Um, we've talked about it countless times. And this is going to be a quick like two-shot episode, I feel like. One and 11, not great, okay? Not, not every coach, when they take a new job, has the opportunity to get inst- an instant influx of talent. And Colorado has just that. So don't be surprised. Um, they made up for their little if you want to call that a wrong by not giving them their films because honestly if the kid doesn't know that i mean one i feel like he should probably should ask around but two it's i mean he's a kid you know uh, just give him the film move on uh it is what it is but jim moore coming for coach prime very interesting um we're gonna have to see if colorado and yukon line up on the schedule anytime soon i think coach prime is kind of still figuring out the ins and outs of everything and probably too he didn't have this problem when he did so at jackson state but he's also in a much bigger spotlight now um at colorado obviously being a power five program and all that uh, okay let's move on but before we do if you're looking for a delicious snack but don't want all the sugar and calories then you need the best tasting protein bar ever built you got to try this if you're like me and you want to make healthier snack choices but you don't want to compromise on taste i've got just a thing for you built bars and built puffs Built Bars are healthy and taste amazing. Seriously, they taste so amazing. You don't even think they're good for you. You got to try this. What makes Built Bars so good? Well, for starters, they're all covered in 100% real dark chocolate. That's right, real chocolate, not that fake stuff. And they come in unbelievable flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, and cookies and cream. I'm not sure how Built does it, but these bars taste like a candy bar while maintaining amazing macros. And what's even better is that they're healthy, only 130 calories, and 4 grams of sugar with a whopping 17 grams of protein. Protein. Don't know why I said it like that. And now you don't need to wait to get a box. For years, we've been talking about ordering built at built bars at built.com. Now you can get them at your local Walmart or Sam's Club while you can still get your specialty flavors still at built.com. That's right. Head to your nearest Walmart today, walk to the pharmacy section, and grab yourself a box of built bars. You can pick up a four bar box of cookies and cream, double chocolate bar, or coconut puff. If you're close to Sam's Club, run in and grab a 13 bar box with our hip flavors, brownie batter puff, and churro puff. You can thank me later. Okay. We talked about, obviously, the kind of, I want to say the ugly side of the transfer portal because I feel like that was probably the worst part of the portal was kind of the the claims that were being made. And Deion Sanders Jr. was like, that's not true. And so either way, we know that all these guys get their film. Um, they're all getting their film. It doesn't, doesn't really matter now. Uh, let's move on from it, even though coaches are calling out um, Coach Prime. Let's talk about the transfer portal. First of all, Colorado had a huge day yesterday. Um, they landed three portal guys, um, and they lost. Well, they did lose a few people. Let me go over uh, all the guys that have entered since what's today, the twenty seventh. We'll go from the twenty sixth on. Um, Taylor Upshaw, a Michigan transfer, who brought, who actually brought in, um, who's brought in by Coach Prime when he first took the job. Jake Wiley, offense lineman. Yusef uh, Mugaribel, I believe is how you say his name. I don't know. The Florida offensive line transfer who was also brought in. That's three guys now because Tavion Beasley was another guy that Coach Prime brought in as transfers that have now left. Not sure if they left on their own, if they were nudged to leave. Uh, backup quarterback Drew Carter and then Travis Gray, who I talked about on yesterday's episode. And then today, um, Thursday, the 27th, Nigel Bethel, um, a defensive back elected to enter the portal. Okay, so we get that. Let's talk about the guys that are coming in. Okay, because I did a nice write up about all three of them on Athlon. Go check that out. Um, First one of the day was Derek McClendon. The second Florida State uh, edge rusher played in 29 games uh, in four years at Florida State this past season. Played in all 13. 
recorded 37 total tackles, five tackles for a loss, and three and a half sacks. Adding him provides much needed depth across the defense line. Excuse me, that had just a, a handful of players for the spring game. So we didn't really get to see what they were made of. And also, don't forget, we had Jordan Dominic over on the other edge, uh, who had, I believe, almost as many sacks as the entire Colorado roster last season alone. So a uh, good start for that defense line. Um, moving on to the second one, they added another defense lineman, Chaz Wallace from Old Dominion. Um, Chaz Wallace, uh, who in 10 games in last season recorded 20 tackles, two and a half tackles for a loss, and can kind of move all over the, the defense line. Um, he obviously had a ton of potential because he was getting offered by tons of programs. He was contacted by Cincinnati, Louisville, Ole Miss, Arizona State, and Maryland. Um, yeah, I think especially for a guy like Chaz Wallace, who's going to offer some versatility, some backup, some depth. Uh, he may start, but we have Shane Cokes already, Leonard Payne. Um, those two guys kind of looked really good in the spring game. So even if he doesn't start right away, he's going to be able to rotate in. Um, I think the best way to use defense linemen is to rotate them as you want to be able to allow them to build momentum, but rotate them. So they're always fresh. And I think having more depth like this will only help that process. Um, I like to base a lot of the things I watch based off Texas because I covered them so closely. Um, last year they would they'd be in for like a couple plays and they'd they'd have like a, a line change. Like it'd be like, okay, three guys on, three guys off, stuff like that. So if Colorado is able to do that with guys that are quality players, that's a good position to be in. And then last one of the day, uh, another Florida State transfer, uh, Brendan Gant, not Grant, Gant, G-A-N-T. Um, he's kind of a linebacker safety hybrid. Um and he he played he played a lot this past season. Played in twelve games, um, started six, I believe. Um, total thirty three tackles, one and a half tackles for a loss, one sack, one pass breakup, and one fumble recovery. Um, he's kind of going to be an an in betweener. I'm interested to see how they use him on defense. Charles Kelly will have to figure out a role for him, whether it's like an Isaiah Simmons role over at Clemson, or if it's just he focuses on being a safety, or he focuses on being a lineman. But great big haul for the first day. Um, I don't think it's going to change anytime soon, but their transfer class ranks as the number one class in the country. I imagine that will stay the same uh, just because obviously when you look at their transfer portal class ranking, it is worlds ahead of USC and everybody else that's behind them. So yeah, I think the next transfers that I would look out for, for them to land are probably, let's see. I, I wrote about one yesterday. You guys should really be checking out my Athlon page because obviously when I do this, I only have one episode per day. Athlon, I'm writing like nine articles a day sometimes. So um, I think the next one to watch out for is probably running back um, Alton. What is this? What do you say this last name? Alton McCaskill. Um, he'd probably be the best running back on the roster right away. Um, he had a huge freshman year two years ago. Uh, missed this last season due to injury. Um, so yeah, he's... He would be a huge addition for Colorado. I think that running back room would probably um, immediately be the strongest room on the on the team if he joined, um, just because you got him, Cavazier, Smoke, and then Dylan Edwards. Um, let's talk about guys that they missed out on, just because I know you guys want. I'm going to update you on everything. They were chasing Emmanuel Pregnon, who was the Wyoming offensive lineman. He was one of the number one players in the portal. He was ranked number one in the portal until Bear Alexander entered. He went to USC, um, and then not sure if they were pursuing him but they will be playing him or seeing him eventually. Chance Nolan, former Oregon State quarterback, has transferred to TCU, meaning that they might see him week one in Dallas, um, which also means that my Athlon preview of TCU was blown up again. Uh, love that for me. <laughs> uh, it doesn't really matter to you guys, but I've, I've written a, uh, a preview about TCU for Athlon, and I think I've had to re redo it four times minimum because of guys entering the portal, because of, yeah, just shenanigans antics if you will um but yeah colorado was landed three guys yesterday i'm sure they're gonna land more i was told that they landed a handful during the spring game they obviously just landed the roster spots now and this is kind of like the trending thing on google if you just google Col colorado football and you scroll down a little bit um there's a nice little tweet from max olson of the athletic it says colorado had 18 players enter the transfer portal on monday that's 41 since Deion sanders was hired so far, 63 of their 83 scholarship players from last season, 2022, have moved on. Um, this is probably the most dramatic roster flip ever. And then Brian Howell from the Denver Post said Colorado is down to 60 projected scholarship players in the fall, which means 
Deion Sanders has 25 open spots to work with. And with only 14 returning players, and as of now, I think that'll go down. There could be 71 or more scholarship players who are new. So obviously Colorado has to be doing some more work in the portal. Um, they have a ton of guys that they've been reaching out to. If you guys would like a little refresher, I'll go over that right now. Um, just to kind of remind you um, who they're targeting. Because obviously, um, they're, it's going to be tough to learn this whole new roster. Let me pull this up real quick. And there it is. Command F always coming in handy. Um, if you or control F if you don't have a Mac. Okay, so obviously they went after Emmanuel Pregnon. He is committed to USC, so he's off the board. Miles Rouser, safety for Campbell, who was a four-star guy committed to Arkansas that randomly flipped to Campbell. Still confused about that. Cameron Johnson, a Houston offensive lineman who's visiting Boulder. Uh, I, I believe this weekend or in the coming days, but he's visiting Boulder. Um, Varquez Gums, the North Texas tight end. Um, some more help a tight end would be great. Uh, they missed out on Jerry Ante Davis from Jackson State. He's at Texas A&M. They got Brennan Gantz. Um, Troy Everett, offensive lineman, App State. He's a center. He is very experienced. He's being courted by Cincinnati, UNLV, Oklahoma. E.J. Morton, the wide receiver out of Marshall. Um, Cameron Robinson, the edge out of North Texas. He was visiting during the spring game. Um, Kari Manns, uh, University of D Maine defense lineman. He's visiting sometime soon as well. They got Chaz Wallace, obviously. Trevin Ma or Mae from Oregon, uh, edge rusher. They missed out on Barry Alexander. Um, they got Derek McClendon. Um, the next guy that everybody's kind of looking, and this would be if I was a betting man, this would be my my bet for the next transfer they land, or one of the next would be Jaquez Robinson, the defense back Alabama. He's got a relationship with Charles Kelly. Um, and I just feel like it makes too much sense. Um, Anthony Campbell, a six foot seven defense lineman from Louisiana Monroe. Uh, that are also Marcus Peterson, a wide receiver out of Cincinnati, committed to McNeese State, and then Cadillac Brown out of Nebraska, um, and then Darius Lasser from Eastern Michigan. And this would be the biggest addition, I think, in the portal. Isaac Uku, um, the edge rusher out of Ma James Madison, had a ton of sacks last year, was one of the best defensive linemen um, maybe in the country last year um, in terms of getting pressure. So they have a lot of options. They will probably bring in at least – 15 20 more transfers i don't know we'll see uh I, before we move on i want to thank you guys for making locked on your first listen every day for every dayers um tomorrow on the show we're going to be talking about the latest transfer portal news the latest coach prime news so you won't want to miss it i appreciate you guys for listening every day i appreciate you guys appreciate you guys for support um again the more you support me the better i do the more fun we can have with this the better the bigger the guests we could have on um so without further ado let's talk about um what I mentioned earlier in the episode, Cordell Stewart, who, if you're not familiar with him, you're lying because everybody's familiar with him. Let me pull up what he is doing. Um, let's see. Oh, where to go? Oh my gosh. Now I got to look it up again. 24 seven. He was talking about Colorado. There we go. Here it is. Um, so Colorado legendary quarterback um, who played from 91 to 94. Um, where he set program records in passing yards, touchdowns, completions, pretty much everything imaginable. Um, he was on uh, the college sports on Sirius XM show, and he says, when you ask questions of how we will look or how we will look any different or whatever the case may be, we were 1-11 last year. I don't know if that counts for my 1-11. I didn't say it. Just saying. I, I would like to let the record show that this is a quote, not me saying it. Stewart said, um, sarcastically oh this Stuart, that was the end of a sentence that was my little tangent sarcastically speaking and seriously we will not have the that product on the field there's a pro, that's a promise there's a hundred percent guaranteed that that product will not be on the field and it's not the kids fault it's a process of how we were grabbing these kids what am i anticipating one a much better and successful season guaranteed two a chance to play for a championship whether it be for a bowl game a playoff and the reach is a national championship so i is so i see us playing and competing and again, if you didn't know about Cordell Stewart, look at the tapes. Even I knew about Cordell Stewart. You know, I, I he's he played before I was born. Uh, not to age any of you guys, I appreciate my older followers. You guys are the best. You guys are the passionate ones. Um, he threw for six thousand yards, thirty-three touchdowns, um, and led Colorado to an eleven-one record in nineteen ninety-four. Um, the biggest moment of his career, though, is obviously the Hail Mary pass to defeat Michigan, um, which some people consider one of the best plays ever in college football. 
Um, either way, he continues saying people are looking at coach's swag and we come in and it's time, all that great stuff, the music, the antics, but let me tell you something. Energy is everything. You can have talent, but if you don't have energy, you may not have the opportunity to win. If I can match that level of intensity, tenacity, you don't know what can happen. If you have the marquee players that you need in place on the offensive side, two or three, you only need a couple. Michael Westbrook and I and Rashad or Rashad Solomon Salam on the offense, along with the entire offense line, we had that thing unlocked. Off or defensively, Cameron, Silman, Craig, and Travis Hunter, they have that nucleus. Um, so I just think, honestly, we're going to be really good this year. We're going to compete for sure, and s- people are going to see us coming, and they're going to ha- have to deal with it. There's nothing you could stop. You're just going to have to deal with it. And he's drinking that Kool-Aid is what he said. Um, so Cordell Stewart, great embrace. Um, something that was really cool when I went to the spring game and was listening to Coach Prime talk about um, how he's changing the program was one of the things he told us was – He's trying to get the alumni more involved, uh, Cordell Stewart, Michael Westbrook, who, whoever it may be. Um, they kind of distance themselves from the program as of late, understandably. And now they're all kind of kind of coming back and they're supporting. And Coach Prime appreciates their presence. He's embraced it. He's had them talk to the team multiple times. And so Cordell Stewart, very high on the program. And I think let's add him to our imaginary list. Like imagine there's a list right here. Um, boom, boom, boom. Um, Cordell Stewart, Urban Meyer, Joel Klatt. Uh, who else? I feel like they're missing someone. That's three notable people in college football that think Colorado will be competing for a national championship. Um, if they could bring in all this talent, and I think this will be the deciding factor as to what if they could compete for a national championship. Obviously, they're able to bring in the talent, but if the talent can mesh, they'll be fine. That's cha- that's what will get them to a championship. If the talent comes in and they have issues learning Sean Lewis's system or they have issues just being cohesive or something like that, then it'll be kind of tough. But I think the coach prime has a good mix of guys around him. He has a good mix of coaches. And so I think they're going to be all good Um, to get this kind of endorsement for Cordell Stewart is huge for the program. And if you're a Colorado fan, it's just hard not to be excited. I know it again. I'm putting my ceiling until we see what this team looks like, which is not going to be until fall. Um, I'm putting my ceiling at six to seven wins. Um, but it wouldn't surprise me if they, they exceeded that number. Wouldn't surprise me. So let's just, let's just wait. Well, I'll, I'll have the more, whoa, excuse me. I'll have all the transport updates here and on Athlon. Go check that out. Um, I'll have all the updates you need to know on coach prime here at locked on. I appreciate you guys for making locked on bus your first listen. Um, if they're, Colorado is going to make it to a championship, I'll be there every step of the way, making sure that you guys have the best coverage. Um, again, thank you guys for making locked on bus your first listen. We're available wherever you get your podcast. Make sure to tune in tomorrow. Make sure to like subscribe, share, and I will see you guys tomorrow again. Thank you guys. I appreciate you guys. Appreciate your love and support. And we will see you guys on Friday. Have a great day. Thank you.